This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and I don't even have to tell you what this is. This is an iconic orange colored phone, isn't it? This is the iPhone 17 Pro. Also, of course, available as the Pro Max, depending on whether you like this 6.3 inch size or a 6.9 inch size smartphone. A lot has finally changed with Apple's iPhones, and we're going to look at it now. So the design has been kind of stagnant for a couple of generations with the iPhone Pro line and the features have been, you know, the incremental thing. Camera gets a little bit better, CPU gets a bit faster. So finally we have some major changes here and I think this is going to be a bigger upgrade cycle. Last year they thought, oh, because of AI stuff, everybody was going to upgrade and people always do buy new iPhones, duh. But, you know, I think this year enough is going on. So first off, not just the fact that this is cosmic orange and we usually don't see lively colors in the pro models you have to go to the baseline of iphones to get more interesting colors uh, it's a unibody aluminum design no titanium no stainless steel just don't expect it to actually get any lighter either probably because there is more metal coverage like here this matte area is where the ceramic shield too is which is a hybrid of glass and ceramic mix those molecules together do some ionization stuff and you get some tough glass which is it's also got that on the front but anyway the, there's a ring here for the mag safe and that's open but there underneath here there actually is aluminum too unibody aluminum one chunk carve it out you got yourself this uh, obviously the camera plateau is no longer glass and the cpu is behind here and a vapor chamber too for cooling so one of the things about the iphone pro line is sure they're fast but they can also overheat you might get a message saying if you're a real power user or heavy gamer or doing ProRes video recording and editing that the phone needs to cool down stuff like that that actually happens less here aluminum still transfers heat that's one of the points of it it, it is better at transferring heat so it does move the heat outward from the CPU that so you'll still feel the phone getting warm particularly right over here if you are hardcore gaming with some demanding game or something but the phone itself won't overheat as much and it'll do a bit better in sunlight which is the other bane of OLED high-end phones existence the heat of the sun the screen gets hot the processor gets hot the whole thing gets hot the screen dims yada yada less of that here so that's good you know I mean otherwise it's like buying the world's fastest gaming laptop with no good cooling inside and it still doesn't go so fast what would be the point so excellent there. The cameras are upgraded finally too. So you've got 48 megapixel cameras for all three sensors now instead of just the main camera. What does that mean? Even though the telephoto is now a 4x optical instead of 5x like it was last year, you got a lot more megapixels to work with. Instead of 12, you have 48. The quality is going to go up and then it has an 8x mode, which really, let's face it, is a crop in mode, but you're still working at 24 megapixel there. So the quality is better. Better. And of course you have the ultra wide angle now higher resolution too you've got the usual pro res raw recording on this you've got genlock you've got log apple log 2 format so you've got like things that are just crazy because there are a lot of people who do use these for some very serious video recording and you can still slap on a like a samsung t7 or t5 ssd to record directly to that because it's going to take up a lot of space if you were doing that high quality 4k recording right so those fancy cameras are also what you're getting if you're not going for the more svelte, slim, perhaps pretty, depending on your point of view, iPhone Air, which has one single 48 megapixel camera, doesn't do this high-end ProRes RAW and Genlock and all that kind of stuff, right? And also the front camera has been upgraded, as you've no doubt heard that iPhone Air also has this the center stage front camera, you know, the one that follows you around, which is very handy, actually, if you're doing FaceTime and stuff like that. And if you're doing it in landscape mode, the sensor is now square, so it looks just as good portrait or landscape. And also the center stage means that you don't have the sideways eyes kind of look that you did when you were using it in landscape mode before because the camera's off on one side, right? You know what I mean? So that's nice. And you can do front and back recording as well simultaneously for video too so everybody likes that right here i am narrating what i'm seeing over here if you're an influencer you'll love it right just share it with your friends cool 
Now there already is a budding scratch gate going on because aluminum is softer than titanium or steel. There is that, right? Uh, and some people have managed to scratch the camera plateau where the coating is the thinnest going over that kind of sharpish edge there. And if you, uh, the one guy on YouTube here managed to, it had flew off of a tripod that was about, I guess, yay high and smashed on some cement steps and the corner had lost its orange anodizing. These things can happen. Most of us use a case. Uh, I think we're gonna have to wait to see how scratchy scratch gate is. Um, the ceramic shield too on the back. Some people have said that they've seen some MagSafe marks at the Apple store because they use these kind of chewed up, beat up MagSafe mounts that are proprietary to the Apple store. So I'm not sure that that's really a very good gauge of that. Anyway, if you're worried about it, there's always the iPhone Air with its strong, shiny sides, right? So looks wise, I mean, I do feel like this is sort of the Apple Watch ultrafication of the iPhone. This is rugged, it's angular, it is chunky, un, it is unashamed of that, it is not a light phone, all that sort of thing. Uh, the colors though, I, I, mean, I love cosmic orange, but I just like orange in general, but uh, some people are bummed that there's no black. So I know on Apple's website, the blue phone looks kind of zingy, but in person, it's a blue black, it's matte, it's understated. So I think that that's a fine substitute for those of you who like black iPhones. There's also a silver iPhone. That's it, three colors, no more. The screen is the usual 120 hertz ProMotion OLED Retina Super XDR Cosmic whatever you know the latest marketing language is. It's, it's still an excellent screen. This year, I swear, the screen quality it really does look a little bumped up though. And now we have 3,000 nit peak brightness, which means outdoors on auto brightness and 1,000 nits conventional. So, experientially though, to me they look better than last year's models. Same with the iPhone Air screen too. So they're doing something right here. It's nice. Another thing that this aluminum unibody design affords is more space for a bigger battery, which you get. So 33 hours claimed video playback time for the Pro, 39 hours for the Pro Max. Nobody ever complains that their Pro Max battery life sucks, honestly. That thing just goes for days, right? And uh, yeah, it's true. I used to use a Pro Max and I've been testing the Pro more now. And I used to find the Pro sort of made me nervous because it would run out of battery too soon, right? Now, it doesn't happen anymore. It's pretty much good for a day of use with average, normal, moderate use, including playing a little games, taking some photos, some video. So they've done a good job there and, and yay for adding a bigger battery. That is something, I mean, this is the pro of the pro phone. Finally, it's sort of, again, that gaming laptop analogy. It ain't skinny, but boy, does it have all the features you want and stamina in spades. I can fast charge as well with a wired charger. 20 minutes using a 20 watt or higher charger will get you 50% of your battery capacity back. And that's a little bit longer than the iPhone Air, which can do the same, but it takes it, well, 30 minutes instead of 20 minutes. So good times. So overall, I have to say this year, Apple has done pretty much what people want and the AI features are here. We're not gonna get AI Siri until next year. They're delaying it to make sure Siri doesn't hallucinate too much and all those things AIs do, I guess. Uh, but you do have the other features that are finally here that Android people have been enjoying. So you have things like, yeah, you look at your screen, take, okay, look at my screen right now. Tell me what is this I'm looking at? I need more information, that sort of thing. The live translate feature, really nice when you're talking to somebody who you don't understand at all. I, the, the, all the typical stuff you would expect, you know, the photo editing, the image remove, uh, photo bomber, all this AI stuff is here finally, minus AI Siri next year for them. So they've done a good job this year. Yay, the price hasn't gone up. Also yay, 256 gigabytes is now your baseline for storage. So that's doubling what it used to be. And you can go to 512 gigabytes or one terabyte if you want to, but you're still looking at 1099 and 1199 for the two models, smaller and larger. So happy times there. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.